welcome to www.minitvstick.com. So what I have here is the MK808. What I'm going to do in this video is uh, just go through how it's wired together, demo of some common applications, BBC iPlayer, Gmail, Netflix, YouTube, those kind of things. And then point out some of the new features and highlight some of the negatives. Finally, I'll, I'll let you know what I think about it in general. So it's come in this plastic box. As you can see, there's no, no Android logo. So what do you get in the box? First of all, obviously you get the MK808 stick, mini USB adapter. In fact, this one's broken. There's a HDMI cable here, caps. There's a mini USB to a USB cable, a power adapter too. Now I'm in the UK, so they actually kindly also sent this adapter, which plug in, just use a UK, UK plug. 10 amps, 250 volts, pretty non-standard, but I can give it a go. The feel of this unit is, it feels like a Lenovo laptop case. It, looks, it feels like a ThinkPad case, kind of rubbery type feel, which is quite different from the MK802 that I had. There's also a USB here, a mini USB, and there's a power symbol where I need to uh, power it with a I'm hoping that I can just power this from the TV, but that USB, the other one, uh, on-the-go USB on the side, the HDMI this time is on the back. I guess I have to use the cable this time. And ventilation um, slits. Actually, it's a little bit worrying because I've, I've had a quick look through the manual. First thing I read, please unplug power supply when there is nobody at home or didn't use over a long time of period. Maybe perhaps there's some heating issues, I'm not really sure. Just so you can compare MK808 here and MK802 here, although I do like this extra part on the MK802. This is a RK3066 dual core. This is 1.2 to 1.6 gigahertz. I'm hoping it's the 1.6 I've got here. Should have a gigs worth of RAM. Other than that, the specification for this unit looks very similar to the 802. Let's see how it runs. So I've got this stick plugged into the TV now. Plugged into the HDMI socket on my TV. Uh, I just thought I'd give it a go so I've taken the power USB here. Just plugged it straight into the USB on the back of my TV. Surprisingly it actually worked. I'm not sure how it works because my understanding is that the USB only gives 500 milliamps whereas the plug actually gives an amp. 32 seconds or so. RC11 seems to work fine. Unfortunately, I don't know if you can tell, but it's actually all in Chinese. I've just gone to settings and it's gone down to this option. First option here, English United Kingdom, and it's all changed. That was easy. I've just connected up to the internet full signal. Look at just a few seconds, very much similar to previous version of Android. Browser, it's really quick. I just click on it and pretty much instant. I mean, let me just close that. It came with the voice search application here and it also came with sound recorder, but then it doesn't really work because I don't have a mic. I've also noticed that the scrolling is much nicer. There is an option to change to 1080p, so I'm just going to select that and see what happens. Let's check that again, and yeah, it's on 1080p now. It was so quick it just crashed. Is that, I mean, that's what it suggested in the document. Okay, this is the YouTube interface. I just click and drag. I can also go to full screen mode. It's very clear. So this is Twitter, uh, it just runs fine. Got stumble upon here. Just scroll around here on the BBC app. Fine, I can scroll up and down. I can watch videos if I want to. Has no problems playing that. So eBay's already logged in. And yeah, I can just scroll through. No problems with eBay. Go back, buy it, watch it. I've got Netflix here as well. Unfortunately, I don't have an account. Um, but as you can see, it's loads fine. I've seen other videos where Netflix is working. Okay, so you can see there's a problem immediately because I can't click on both eyes at the same time. Here's the mini. TV stick website and that just works fine as well. A bit of videos on YouTube seems to have no problem playing as well. Yeah, that one. Okay, so, uh, so I've actually downloaded for the Hunger Games to rent it out, so I'm just gonna see if this works. Yeah, yeah let's see. And I oh, don't no, there's sound as well. So that's good. Watch two and a half hours of Hunger Games here and the system's been absolutely fine. So final words on this unit. I think it's great that it's got the dual core. Great that it's got jelly bean on it. Not really push unit to its limits. I have actually done a benchmark which I will post up later and I'll add details of the stick. I'll also be scanning in manual for the stick into the website as well if you want to have a look. Some of the bad things about this unit, I found that when I plugged it into the TV, there was a little bit of interference with the audio cable. I'm also not a great fan of the fact that we need to plug this unit to the mains and you don't have that problem with the mk02 but i guess that's what you need to run that dual core processor thanks for watching and please visit the website www.minitvstick.com please subscribe check out the review on the mk02 and the benchmark thanks bye